Well, what did you think of the debut of okay. Rob Gronkowski on SmackDown? Is this so this guy is a, a big star football player, right? I know nothing about football. I've heard his name as you know in passing. I don't seek out any knowledge of any football players. This guy's a big star. He was a big star. He retired, uh, I think, a couple of seasons back. He was a big star with the New England Patriots, who have obviously won many, many championships in the NFL. And he's been a wrestling fan that's been talked about for years. I think well, he, I can tell that he got in the ring just like a wrestling fan that was getting in the ring on <laughs> fucking Raw. He's appeared on wrestling before, but now I believe he has signed a contract and obviously hosting WrestleMania. And apparently, it, it, is he supposed to be a goof or did they just make him a goof for this? <laughs> I was watching this and thinking, is this his decision to come out and start dancing to an audience that isn't there? I did, but was that dancing or was it epileptic seizures? Was it convulsions? <laughs> was it was it twerking? He humped the ring post for God's sake. That's why I said he. I, I, I was going to say he made Shane McMahon look like a cross between Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. I figured that was too old a reference for the room. It, are there any talented dancers these days? What? Who's the most famous dancer in the world right now? I actually don't know. Maybe someone on that. Uh... Well, there you go. What, what is the dancing show? Celebrities dancing. Uh, dancing with the stars. Dancing with the stars. That was hard. I don't watch. What's that, that show where they dance with the stars? What's it called? <laughs> well, I don't watch it. I'm assuming one of those dancers is probably the most famous dancer in the world right now. Well, apparently there ain't a lot of famous dancers anymore, so we're gonna have to go back. And Ron, Ron Gronkowski is not one of them. What the fuck? He came out like a goof. He recited a memorized statement. I'm happy that he was a fan when he was young and et cetera, but that that's what it, it looked like. Another instance of a guy that a fan that won a contest to come get in the ring on raw. And then for whatever reason, he that Mojo Raleigh, I, I was going to say the same thing about him, but he apparently actually is, is a, alleged to be a wrestler. And he's the friend of, of Ron Gronkowski's that set this whole thing up. So they ought to fire him immediately. Uh, but he and Mojo Raleigh assaulted Michael Cole for whatever fucking reason. And not beating him up, but fucking grabbing his ass or whatever. He seemed like he was having a ball, Michael Cole. Uh, yeah, well, because he's a football fan. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's the thing. Every time, wh whether it was that. Who was the goddamn Pac-Man Jones, the football player in TNA? Oh, God, yeah. The boys were just over the moon that Pac-Man Jones was going to come and be a part of their show. And after they explained to me who the fuck he was, I said, wait a minute. So a disgraced football player that is not allowed to play football is going to be a big addition to our fucking program. And then that fucking guy, he came with his entourage, which was a bunch of fucking grown adult men dressed like John Cena's worst nightmare with fucking chains around their neck and the floppy fucking shoes and the baggy shorts and the backwards caps. And I'm not being racial, racial when I say that because it was a mixture of white and black people that all looked like they were dressed like a goddamn of, of an explosion in a Salvation Army drop box after the rappers had dropped off all their goddamn... Uh, hand me downs. How big was the entourage? Oh, he must have brought eight, ten, ten, twelve guys with him. Pac Man Jones, who was it, it, like he was somebody, and they're just wandered around, fucking whatever. But the boys are all football fans, so they mark out, you know, to have these football players, whether they and Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor at WrestleMania, what was that, 22 or three years ago or five, 25 years ago? WrestleMania 11. Yeah. Um. Oh, the guys were just, oh, my gosh, it's Lawrence Taylor. I'm like, okay, here's the problem, guys. And, and that includes the office. And Vince is obviously a football fan. He just started a football league. You put this fucking high-profile fucking match on WrestleMania, a single match with a guy that's never had a fucking match before. He's a great athlete. I don't give a fuck. So, uh, you know, so is goddamn Olga Corbett was a great athlete. I don't know if she'd be winning any UFC competitions. It's different athletics. But they're, they're always over the moon when they can get a, because all the guys are football fans. 
so they can get football players to come and they think hey, Mike Tyson was worth the money. Mike Tyson, A, didn't act like he was a goddamn fan that won a contest. He was so happy to fucking be there. It was his lifelong dream. He was like, yeah, I'm the baddest man in the world. Now I'm on Raw. It worked. Secondly, they didn't have him work because he wouldn't have been able to. And thirdly, he was a huge goddamn celebrity. Well, that's the other thing. He was a worldwide star, one of the big failings with Lawrence Taylor, who, all things considered, did exceptionally well in that match with Bam Bam. I was going to get to that. Go ahead. But Lawrence Taylor was a Northeast star. He was a New York giant. So he was That's another thing. Rob Gronkowski's a New England Patriot. He's not known throughout the world. He's known throughout the United States, but he's only a big deal to fans of the New England Patriots. Well, and Lawrence Taylor was also because it was New York. That and I mean, Bruce is from Texas. He knows better, but he wasn't gonna say any different. I kept saying, Bruce. He's a big star in New York. This is a pay-per-view all across the fucking world. Oh, but every, you know, New York's center of the universe because that's what Vince thinks. And that's how they're, the, the, everybody in the office is taught. So, Lord, but Bam Bam Bigelow, to his credit, he thought, I'm going to get a lot of publicity out of this. It's a big fucking high-profile WrestleMania match. He took the incentive to make sure, and he was one of the better workers in the company at that time, at the, especially he was the best big man in the business at one time and still one of the better workers in the company at that time. And he made it his mission for that thing not to be embarrassing and to get as much out of Lawrence Taylor as could be got. And he did it. And I, have, I was there when they helped Lawrence Taylor to the back. As soon as he got through that goddamn... Uh, the entrance way, right? And it wasn't as majestic as it was then and uh, as it is now, and it's still on the floor. He didn't have to walk up a ramp. He got through that entrance way, and people had to physically help him to a chair. I have never seen a man as close to death as Lawrence Taylor was, and they were worried about him and calling the EMTs and like, do we need to hydrate him? Does he need some water? What the fuck? Is he? he was he had he turned white, and that's not a racist remark either. He was ready to fucking pass out. I think it, he would have vomited if he could have got an, up enough energy. And he got a fucking um, a healthy dose of, re learned a healthy dose of respect for what the guys did at that point because here comes Bam Bam, 400 fucking pounds or whatever he was, smiling from ear to ear. Hey, that was great. And this big NFL football player is ready to be hooked up to a machine. So, but anyway, back to Ron Gronkowski. Rob, I swear to God, the only thing that could have made this worse was here comes Baron Corbin, who has been appointed Grand Marshal of the Possum Day Parade. <laughs> with that fucking outfit and that fucking <laughs> teeny tiny little head. What? You, you can't escape him every time you watch now. I, I know. It's like he's everywhere. <laughs> And that's the most ludicrous visual I've ever seen. And and with the head and the fucking face, even if he wasn't reciting lines, obviously, that somebody else has given him, he just looks so ridiculous. It just screams. It's It, it doesn't even scream underneath guy. It screams outlaw. You can't take that seriously. And And then here comes Elias. <laughs> and he performs some lines <laughs> and he sings a song and the two goons are in the background laughing at Baron Corbin like everybody else was uh, but uh, but uh, he's still dancing Ron Gronkowski back there in the bag he's still dancing I swear to God I'm not lying to you I wrote I'm going to read you exactly what I wrote I wrote, this is a fucking high school play. Less than 10 seconds later, they did the schoolyard push trip. Like they were six years old. The guy got down on his hands and knees behind Baron Corbin and old Ron Gronkowski pushed him over backwards. I just said it's a high school play. They haven't made it that far. We used to do that in fourth grade. And then somehow Gronkowski is told before he goes out there, how to say the line that he was supposed to say, which was, I'm not, you know, running the show at WrestleMania, but I'm going to, 
I'm going to really support a match between you, which was awkward anyway or whatever, and somehow he managed to mumble mouth that. I'm going to advocate for a match between you guys at WrestleMania. Ready, ready, ready. Because there's nobody there. And there's the match no one is asking for. <laughs> there's a match. Yes. <laughs> By absolutely no demand whatsoever, we have signed this match that's going to be embarrassing, and we signed it in an embarrassing way with our embarrassing host. Can you imagine how stinky, if this guy is the host of WrestleMania, how stinky it's going to be with, with no people even there? If he does have fans, they won't even be there to cheer him when he fucking sounds like an idiot? I wish there were. I'm actually really curious how the WWE fan base will react to him dancing and acting the way he does and him and mojo raleigh together it's just like spring break it's just awful it's like spring can, break I on can, the jersey shore it's awful. i can tell you how they would have uh reacted uh, at such a time when wrestling fans actually liked and respected wrestling they'd boot him out of the building and thrown shit at him but with this audience i don't know they th everything's supposed to be a fucking joke everything's supposed to be a fucking hoot it's supposed to be something you laugh at wrestling and if you if you take your business seriously or attempt to take the business that you're a fan of seriously, people laugh at you for it because it has become such a joke. So I don't know now how maybe they think that, okay, a guy, you know, dancing to the ring, like he's just been tased by the fucking Parsippany, New Jersey police force is somehow entertaining. They, but it, when you think of a badass football player, couldn't this guy have come down in some kind of halfway bad? Well, I guess he doesn't really look like a badass, but some kind of serious manner and done something serious to hype WrestleMania. <clears throat> but but if, 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 what they're looking for is publicity, and if he was serious about it, ESPN wouldn't play it. But now ESPN, hey, look at this fucking goofy football player acting like an idiot, that stupid wrestling stuff. So they'll play that. and And... They don't mind if shit like that gets played about their company now because everybody in decision-making power in the company he's, was either never in the wrestling business or now no longer admits it. So they think that's good shit. I don't fucking know what to tell you. The more WWE I see, the more I understand a portion of the AEW fan base who just want wrestling and are very excited about AEW. There's people who just love everything AEW does. And there's other people who just want to watch wrestling, and I understand it. They can't watch this crap. The presentation, the tone, the commentators, the bad comedy, playing to crowds that aren't there. It's not just about the empty arena shows. We've watched shows with arenas that were at least half filled. Not good. This is really not, this is not a good television product. It's not a good wrestling product. And, and of all people. AEW proved it can be done with a few people in the building and just being serious instead of trying to win. <laughs> There's a reason why they added laugh tracks with all the sitcoms in the 60s. Because a joke doesn't sound like a joke if nobody laughs at it. And that's why they have to have Michael Cole laugh at it. But when it's not funny and he laughs at it, then it just it looks even, it calls attention to the fact that it's not funny. And I'm not advocating there's a word for people for them to go out and hire funnier comedy writers i'm actually advocating for them to fire the writers they have now and don't hire anymore and let some wrestlers preferably ones with 20 years experience or whatever the time was that they stopped taking the wrestling business seriously book their fucking wrestling <clears throat> guy you know and if you had a bunch of guys like Cesaro and Daniel Bryan did the other week or you had some guys that you know that uh, I, who who else there was somebody else on one of the empty WWE shows that actually did pretty good and took it halfway seriously I can't remember now but otherwise you've got a bunch of people that have been trained that they are performers trained at a performance center and are used to doing athletic routines rather than simulating a contest and instead of doing their own promos they're used to being handed shit on a piece of paper and told to say exactly that so they're fucked they're completely fucked and i you know that's the fault of of 
them not being trained any other way. They're not in the wrestling business anymore. Therefore, they're completely lost when they have to do anything other than what they've been doing. And that's why I didn't train guys the WWF way in OVW. I trained guys how to be wrestlers because then they could adapt to do shit, but they could still do shit when they had to.